This week on Geared Up on GeekWire, it's our special Back from the Dead episode. Zombies. Exactly. We'll be talking about the return of Nokia smartphones, the revival of the Samsung Galaxy Note, and the resurrection of Microsoft Paint. Plus updates on the HTC U11 with Alexa and the latest on... Oh, Alexa just activated when I did that. <laughs> on the HTC U11, in works. fact, it finally worked. And plus the latest on our experiences with T-Mobile. All that and more coming up this week on Geared Up on GeekWire. I'm Todd Bishop. I'm Andrew Edwards. All right, let's jump right into it. All right, Samsung's Galaxy Note 8. Now, yes. let's sort of catch people up here because I assumed that we were done talking about any kind of Galaxy Note after oh, the debacle that was the Galaxy Note 7. Is okay. that not the case? That's not the case at all. In fact, Samsung just released a Note about two weeks ago, the Galaxy Note Fan Edition. Okay. Are you familiar with this? I'm not, no. Okay. Tell me about it. You, I hope you're ready. <laughs> Strap yourself in. The Galaxy Note Fan Edition is Samsung taking all of the recalled Galaxy Note 7s taking out the battery and putting another one in and rebranding oh, it. Geez. Didn't they do this once before? They did. Like, it was unsuccessful. So it's fan so, edition, meaning people who are fans People of, who really liked the Note 7. Should risk burning down their homes. There it is. Because <laughs> um, the same thing. It's the same phone. It's the same phone as the Note, se- as a Note 7. But this time, this time this we time, swear the right. battery doesn't combust. It's all good. It's all good. So if you if you really like the Note Seven, which was, in all fairness, aside from that one th- one issue, a great phone. It was. It, w- think, it would have been my phone of the year. It was. The t- yeah. It was probably but, one of your favorite phones of all time. Yeah. It was really good. It was really good. Um. So it was unfortunate what happened to it. But if you really liked that phone, and you want to get in on it, you can do that by picking up the Galaxy Note Fan Edition that just came out, like I said, a couple weeks ago. Now, moving on from there. We've got the Samsung Galaxy Note 8, which is going to be announced in New York City on the 23rd of this month. So they announced that there's an announcement coming. Which, which is, is typical fare. Does in the, everybody does that. No, Come they on. don't. Well, Microsoft, Apple, they schedule these special events usually. In this case, though, you know what the product is. Right. But, okay, so. That's the difference. So we know, for example, when Apple invites people to a September event, we know that's going to be an iPhone, right? right. We right. know this. But Apple doesn't say, hey. At our September event, we're announcing the next iPhone. Right. So come on out. So Samsung is like, hey, Galaxy Note 8, don't right. miss this. Right. So yeah, but 6.3 inch display. Okay, for context, I looked this up. The iPhone 7 Plus, 5.5 yep. 5 inches. 5.5 inches, yes. That is crazy. At 6.3 inches, it's like, it's no longer a phone. I mean, I know that there's the phablet phrase, but yes, to me, that's what when it you is. get to 6.3, that's just a good old fashioned tablet, isn't it? Well, the you're you're thinking screen size, so you may oh. you may not be thinking correctly because I bet the Galaxy Note Eight is possibly smaller than this iPhone Seven Plus. Gotcha. Because you know this this has so much bezel, right? And the Galaxy Note will not have much bezel at all. So okay. Does that change your opinion it, a little bit? A little bit, yeah. If it's in this size with yeah. that size screen, then I'm, I'm on board. And of course, because of like the rules of geometry, uh, you can actually do more diagonal. And then not boost the actual right. height and width yes, uh, yes. as much. Those it's, are the rules of ge- geometry. The, the rules correct. of geometry. I didn't realize that. So yeah. I'm glad you're educating me. I'm pretty sure there's a theorem <laughs> that I'm forgetting right now. That <laughs> yes. So I don't know. Like the pricing is what people are curious about. So the next two major, you know, the the two big phones coming out this year are going to be the Note 8 and the iPhone, whether it's 8 or Pro or whatever. The new the new one from Apple, and people are curious on both of these. The speculation is that the price is going to yeah. be super high, like more than a thousand for each. Right, right. Speculation. So we don't know, but what what what's your take on that? Would you would you spend a thousand, or let's just say if it's more, let's just say Oof. would you spend eleven ninety nine on either an iPhone eight or that would be a, a tough Note purchase. You know that w- that's a major purchase, it is. and I realize in most cases we're all buying phones on installment plans at this point, but I am so attuned at at this point to my monthly bill mm-hmm. that, gosh, I can't even think it would probably be like 50, 50 more dollars a month or something right. like that than I'm paying now. Um, I, wow. At that price point, it would be not as, not an easy decision. Let me put it okay. that way. Because I think the, the, we talked about this last time a little bit and the problem is, you know, it feels like phones have been stagnant for a little bit and these new bezel-less displays are the next big thing. But other than that, the insides of the phone have been kind of the same. And for an, for a big leap forward to occur, 
we need tech that's not yet cheap. You know what I mean? They need they need to put things in there that cost more to put in, but that adds cost to the device and it also makes it a little more rare so that they can get enough pieces to put into these phones without selling millions of them. So does that suggest that this will have just some kind of wicked fast processor and and just amazing screen and Yeah, and well the display AI, I'm sure is going to be amazing. I think it's we're it's more about like the type of cameras that are going to be used for AR and VR. So Samsung will usually usually there's a, there's a, a rumor about what Apple's doing. And then Samsung will try to come out first. So like, you know, even a couple of years ago, there was a speculation, Apple's working on a smartwatch. The next thing they're going to do is a smartwatch. And Samsung is like, okay, we got to get our watch out there first. And they did. And they came out with, I think, two generations of watch before the Apple watch came out. And so similarly, you know, everyone's talking about this next iPhone and all the, the AR and VR capabilities that it's going to bring to the table. And I think Samsung is going to try to come out a month early and say, here's what we're doing. All the stuff you're expecting from the iPhone, here's how we're doing it. And here's how we're going to do it better. They're not going to say better because we don't know what the iPhone's doing yet. But that's the thing. And in order to, you know, AR and VR is pretty intensive stuff. Yep. Even if it's on a PC, you need a really good PC to make it happen. So on mobile, um, you know, you need good cameras. You need a different camera system that's like laser focused and shooting. You know, you need like you know two thousand points of data for the camera to bring in for depth sensing and all that kind of stuff. So I do think that the price, you know, as as crazy as it sounds, it's kind of warranted too. Especially, it's it's all miniaturized. The smaller you make something, the more expensive it gets. And it really is at this point. These things are small computers. So. Yeah, I don't know. Does that mean you might skip the new iPhone? I don't know. Is that it's, what that it's, means? It's difficult. We'll see. We'll see. You know, we'll talk a little later. I had an iPhone 7 experience yes. this, this past week that I almost I almost did the upgrade. Okay, so that's the Note 8. Uh, big price, potentially. Yeah. Big size, for sure. Right. Definitely. And uh, coming later this year? Yeah, so they'll announce it on the 23rd. Um, they don't do as quick a turnaround as Apple. So usually Apple announces a phone and then releases it usually 10 days later. Um, Samsung doesn't do that quick of a turnaround, but I would assume that their phone will be available before the new iPhone is. Gotcha. Okay. Speaking of the new iPhone, we talked about that last week. It had been rumored yeah. to be delayed. Right. That rumor now appears not to have been true. Right. Well, then the rumor to counter the rumor, because <laughs> yes. Apple hasn't said anything, Any, yes, right? Yes. So now the rumor is coming out of uh, China that they've started the pre-mass production process of three models of smartphone. So one would assume that would be the iPhone 7S, 7S Plus, and then the newer 8 or Pro. So when they're doing this, it's usually they make, you know, two to 300 pieces per day of the phone. So that's not a lot at all. But they basically want to make sure that as they're making a whole bunch of them, that as they come out, that the quality is there and that it's consistent and everything that they expect to work works the way it should. So the next step from here would be going into mass production. Um, and I honestly don't know, you know, how that all works because you have to imagine when they announce a phone and launch it, they have to have millions available on day one globally, yeah. like across the world. So, you know, I don't know how soon that means they need to start mass production because how many can you make per day between now and September to hit multiple millions of phones in boxes ready to ship? But there are signs. It's at least a sign that there's not going to be a delay. Right. The sign is if there was a delay happening, um, that they wouldn't be ready to be at this stage where they're producing a few hundred a day. Okay. So, so that leads us to believe that we will see the phone on time, on time meaning, you know, by the end of September. Uh, hopefully, we'll see. And you're not convinced this will be called the iPhone 8? I'm not convinced at all. They've never, they've never released a, you know, a full version phone, whether it's, you know, three, four, five, six, seven, and then released the next full version phone the next year. They've never done that. So my assumption is similar to Samsung, who has the Galaxy S8 and S8 Plus, and then they have the Note 8. They don't have the they're not they're not announcing the nine. They have their two main phones, and they have a Pro, basically a, a more prosumer version. I think that's where Apple's going. So it wouldn't make sense to call it the eight because then what do you do next year? 
it could be, could it just be the iPhone Pro? I mean, that would follow right. the that's model. What, follow right. the model with that's the, what I the would iPad. think. Like iPhone Pro or like iPhone Edition, which yeah. is if you look at the Apple Watch line, Edition is the top of the line version. Yeah. So I think it's going to be something more like that, where there's a a name that says this isn't a new generation; it's just a higher, you know, more pro version of the phone. Got it. Good. So that is the latest on the iPhone 8, at least as far as the rumor mill goes. Yes, according to the rumor mill. All right, we're going to take a quick break here on Geared Up on GeekWire. We'll be right back with much more. Welcome back to Geared Up. I'm Todd Bishop. I'm Andrew Edwards. Um, I, I want to talk about Nokia and okay. Android. Let's talk uh, about it. So this, uh, if you if you recall, let's just sort of give a, a, a quick summary here. The okay. news is that you're going to be able to buy a Nokia fo- phone soon, relatively soon, with Android installed. Are you buying this? To get it on the show, I will buy it. <laughs> okay, but you're not you're not excited to get this into your own no, hands and use it no. on a daily basis. Right? Okay, to me, this is the the novelty of the thing. Of course, Nokia was acquired the, the smartphone business, but by Microsoft for many billions of dollars. Okay, Microsoft shut down essentially many of the Nokia operations, laid off a bunch of folks, and stopped using the Nokia brand. Switched to Windows Phone for the phones that it actually makes, okay. which are not many. These days. Right, 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 not, or none at all. So, in the process of doing that, Microsoft actually then shifted the Nokia phone brand to another company. They sold the licensing rights to another company called HMD, which okay. was newly formed and actually consists and is led by former Nokia executives. All right. And so now, Nokia. After having made the this, what turned out to be the disastrous decision to go with Windows Phone and then acquired by Microsoft, yeah. get acquired, it, they're going back to what Stephen Elot probably should have done at the beginning. That was the CEO of Nokia who got mm-hmm. pulled over from, from Microsoft. That guy wanted to be CEO. That's why all this went down. Yeah, he wanted to be CEO of Nokia. Then he wanted to be CEO of Microsoft, right. and that failed. Well, yes, but now HMD is coming out with a Nokia branded Android phone. It's planning to be unveiled next month. They just sent out media invites for that. Okay. So Nokia is back running Android. But what makes this phone different? Because that's really, in this day and age, Android phones are very similar. You need need something that sets you apart. Why would you buy this phone versus the HTC U11 that you can yell at all day (laughs) or the Samsung Galaxy S8 or the LG G6? Or, you know, et cetera. Why, so what's, remember, what's the draw? Re- remember what Nokia's big thing was there toward the end in terms of how they differentiated their hardware? Do you remember? This is going back in the archives. Like colors? I don't know. It, the, the weird ringtone? It ring was tone? colorful. It did have the weird <laughs> ringtone. No, cameras. So oh, remember, yeah, the, it the was 43 the, the megapixel right, photography. Right. So this is rumored to be shipping with Carl Zeiss Optics, okay. which basically was associated with Nokia on smartphones in the past. Mm-hmm. It's uh, rumored to have a a dual camera system uh, with 13 megapixel sensors, um, 5.3 inch display, Qualcomm uh, Qualcomm Snapdragon 835 processor. So, you know, pretty standard phone, pretty standard phone. But I think the novelty of having Nokia return, especially in Europe and a lot of parts of Europe where where the Nokia brand once really reigned, uh, is is notable. And it could have an impact. I don't think you're going to see them rival Samsung, Google, or even HTC for market share. But it's certainly a new entrant. And gosh, it's one of those situations where you look at it and go, why didn't you guys just make that decision long yeah, ago? Yeah, of course. Of course, it's a new company with the Nokia brand, but still, it's Nokia. Yeah, yeah, ultimately. same people, same people. Modern, yeah, yeah. I don't know. They, ha- they really have to do something special with the camera or something to get the attention of the people. Otherwise, it's just another smartphone at the store that you're not going to not going to buy. Yeah. Yeah. You're talking about me specifically or anybody, <laughs> anybody, especially and, you, including me, especially, especially you. you. All right. Hey, last week on the show, you may remember, and I've got it here in my hands. We had the HTC U11. And for some reason, we, we struggled to get Alexa to activate on this device. And the reason that was so interesting was that this is the first smartphone that uh, allows you to activate it just simply by voice from a passive state uh, into Amazon Alexa. So right. it's as if Alexa was native to the phone, even though it's through a third-party app, the HTC Alexa app. After we got done recording, suddenly it started working like magic. What? Yes. Yeah, I, That's I, terrible. Yeah. I, so at any rate, that that was a huge surprise to me, and I just wanted to, to come back and show you that actually it, it does. Let's see. Let's Watch see if it, it works. Not work. Let's see. Alexa. Oh! Terrible. No. It's, it's not working. Is this some sort of like jinx? It's not working. Alexa. 
Okay. I wonder if it's because I'm holding it here. You're holding it by a microphone and like the, all the magnets. Is that what it is? I don't, I don't know. I'm just making Alexa. stuff up. Alexa. Making excuses okay. for HTC. I, will, I just want to say, for the record, when we're not recording, it activates every time. <laughs> and, and I even got it to do it from across the room. Here, here, Claire, you want to hold on to that? Hold that, Claire. Hold that, Claire. Okay. All right. Alexa. There we go. See oh, okay. from across I heard the room. That, I heard so, that. I heard I, that. And I should say that uh, people around the office are starting to think I'm going crazy because all I do is say Alexa and nothing happens. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. And I thought that was your daughter's name because of how long right. you've been yeah. saying it. No, no kids. No. No kids named Alexa out there. I, I think that's probably. Uh, you probably have this whole generation where people will not name their right. kids Alexa. And Deprecate s- that name. Yeah, and certainly not Siri. Ooh, good transition, yeah, Andrew. Like that. <laughs> because just this past week, the big news in Microsoft land was the deprecation yes. of Microsoft Paint. Right. Why is that big news, though? You know, it's one of those beloved programs. Let me ask programs. you a question. Yes. When is the last time you opened Microsoft Paint on any Windows computer that you have? Can you even remember? It was sometime in the 90s. Okay. All right. There you go. You know what? I don't. And if I was answering that question honestly... I, I honestly would probably say the same thing. I don't know that I've ever opened paint on purpose since the 90s. And I'm talking about when I was a child, <laughs> since the 90s. People so, love this program, though. So Microsoft Paint has been around uh, since ni- 1985, so 32 years old. Mm-hmm. This goes back to the earliest versions of Windows, some of the earliest versions okay. of Windows. And it is it has been shipped by default. The news this past week was that Microsoft was deprecating Microsoft Paint right. in upcoming versions of Windows, which means essentially that it would not be in the, the operating system. They would not yeah. ship bundled with the operating system. There was just a huge response from people who love Why? this program. No one loves it. <laughs> uh, at least at least a lot of tech news blogs, ours included, news sites, uh, found out that, that, that people loved it because lo- tons of traffic. Top story on the site. This That's week. crazy. Claire has a mic. Claire yeah. has a mic over she, here. Are you off, do you, do you want to jump Claire. on camera too, Claire? Get you? on camera, Claire. Uh, I don't know if there's room for me. Okay, I might right. just stay over no here. So <laughs> Claire's, Claire's our podcast <laughs> producer and uh, GeekWire reporter over there. Talk to us about yeah, this, Claire. Tell us, tell us your paint story, Claire. Well, I, mostly I used it when I was younger. I don't use it a ton right now, but I literally just closed it when I heard about this because I use it for really fast, easy photo cropping and like... You know, for a GeekWire story, say we're doing a story about multiple different people, yeah. and so I'll put all their photos together in Paint really, really quickly. I don't have, like, Photoshop or anything <laughs> on my desktop, so I it's so fast and easy. You just open it, you crop it, you close it. You don't have to deal with, like, a single sub-menu. It's so great. just to be clear, you're not painting at all. No, that's not true. To clarify, fact, I'm not really painting. <laughs> yes, yes. But and, and we can show this on the live stream here. Sorry, I don't have it on Look the at screen this. behind us. That's the top story. Yeah. <laughs> and that's Claire's drawing it says, that she did on paint. I that's think this right. makes me a professional illustrator. Yes, it says it on my resume. MS Paint 1985 to 2007, RIP my childhood. RIP. <laughs> and she, she actually did that with her Surface Book by removing the tablet and using the pen. A pen. Did you? Yeah, yeah, I did. I had never taken the the tablet section off my Surface Book, so I did that. I did use the the stylus yeah. uh, that someone had lying around. <laughs> That's not a mouse that you did that with? No. That's okay. what I was going to say. Pretty, it's, a mouse. it's still pretty bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, let me see. Dieter, Dieter Rust says, I opened paint last year to do a quick sketch for someone of a house. It's useful to have. And... Um, Dieter Rust also said, yes, easy photo cropping. It's not a cropping tool. There are other cropping tools. It's a cropping tool for people that don't want to deal with real cropping tools, <laughs> myself included. I feel like people like to get upset. <laughs> like, I feel like if if, there, if Microsoft announced anything was being removed from Windows, people would just, no, how can you remove it? Like, just because. It, it's always been there, so it should I, always be there. I will say this. No one lamented the death of Clippy. Mm. Clippy, if, if you were, if you were obnoxious, that. if you were obnoxious like Clippy, then you, people don't care. Then you're you gone. Life then you're lesson gone. there. Okay. Well, I think this was similar to when Nintendo ran out of the NES Classic editions. It's a nostalgic thing. That's totally different. That's, that's a product. I don't, I don't know. If it's, <laughs> that's that's a product. But they that's a product. Back and then it was the, in short The comparison supply. I'm making is the feeling people had. They had that feeling of like, gotcha. oh, this is something from my childhood. This is something I had good feelings about in the past. Yeah. Um, and now that I can't access it anymore, I'm upset about it. Right. 
Right. Even if they wouldn't really have used it anyway. Like I Exactly. Yeah. Yes. I will say, you know what I use for the very same things that you're talking about, Claire? What's that? I, I love, do you know what I'm going to say? Excel. Excel. What? Because he's a crazy person. What? Um, so here's what you do. Wait a minute. Excel. We're talking about for image manipulation? Not so much manipulation, but for simple uh, graphics and cropping. And okay. Cl- so like Claire's example about where she took two photos, put them together. I will frequently do that in Excel. And the, the key- What? Well, yeah. And I'll tell you how it started. The key is to take away the grid lines. You take away the grid lines, and suddenly Excel is like this wonderful open canvas of num- <laughs> numbers and art and graphics and charts. You can do math. You can. Do... I'm thoroughly confused right now. Why? I can Excel? show you. Excel? Here's how I do it. Yeah. Don't you use Excel? You're not alone, Andrew. I hate Everyone Excel, number one. Is... And number two, oh my Excel God. is for like what? putting you, numbers in. How can in. you possibly Excel is terrible. Excel. Excel. I'm sorry. Oh, Excel is one of the greatest pieces of software ever made. What? Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm leaving. <laughs> Are you Excel. kidding me? The things you can do with Microsoft Excel, who out there on YouTube hears me? Who who hears me? If Come you're on. on YouTube and you like Excel, let us know. And if you don't like Excel, let us know. But here's the problem. You know what Excel is? Excel is what the movie Office Space is based on. Like, Excel what? is boring and corporate and confusing and extremely and useful oh. and i mean there is no thing more, there is almost nothing more beautiful than <laughs> a what? complex multi-tabbed spreadsheet where you can change a number on one tab and have a formula that cascades through the rest <laughs> of the workbook cascading and and you t- change one number in the front and suddenly you have a you know this deep insight into some problem that you were solving you know it, excel is excel is one of the it, I'm going to be like what you are to the Samsung Galaxy. <laughs> I'm going to be that to Excel. I'm going wow. to be on the top. You're going to be on commercials? I'm going to be on the top of the New York Times. At any rate, yeah, Microsoft Paint is gone, but I encourage all of you to look at the incredibly flexible potential of another Microsoft program, which is Excel. Excel. So not Paint 3D. Not Paint okay. 3D. Oh, yeah, there's that, too. We're going with- <laughs> Okay, so we, and actually we didn't, so... Microsoft Paint is not actually not dead. So later in the day, getting back to the actual yeah. news here, away from my uh, Excel love letter, the, <laughs> <laughs> Microsoft announced that Paint will actually be available in the Windows Store. So it just won't ship with Windows anymore. Okay. It will, but it will be available in the Windows Store. So I don't know if this was a big ruse to get attention from folks. Since it's on um, the Windows Store, though, that means you can use it with Microsoft Windows 10 S. Right, that's right. Right, that's right. So because the it's, surface it's for laptop. kids, <laughs> it's an app for kids, and Windows 10 S is geared towards that market. Yes. Hey, now you can use Paint. Yep. Back where it belongs. Yep, absolutely. Okay, so uh, that that's that. It was not clear to me if it was planned this way or if the you know all along it was, on, it was just on a deprecation list. Yeah. And then they came out later in the day and said, oh, no, it's going to be in the Windows Store. Did they do that in reaction to the reaction? I'm, it's well, That wasn't clear. Possibly. All right. We're going to take a quick break here on Geared Up on GeekWire. We'll be right back with much more. Welcome back to Geared Up. I'm Todd Bishop. I'm Andrew Edwards. All right. Last thing here, T-Mobile. We've each got T-Mobile. stories. We're T-Mobile customers. Let's hear, your, let, let's hear yours first. All right. Mine wasn't a positive one. So um, did you hear that, John Ledger? John Ledger. <laughs> <laughs> you see, by the way, T-Mobile's giving away free beach towels today. Yeah, I'm like, who, T-Mobile who Tuesdays. Wants that? Yeah, how how do you go from like free movie tickets and free pizza to like here's a free towel, whatever? Anyway, um, so I bought There's this 52 Tuesdays every year. <laughs> I know, I know. Got to do something. <laughs> I bought this Samsung Galaxy S8 at launch. Okay, from them, from T-Mobile, and um, any t- so I paid full price. I didn't pay a, you know a whatever a monthly fee. So anytime you get something full price, you're, also, you're supposed to be able to get it unlocked. That's how it's always been. If I go to the Apple store and I pay full price for an iPhone, it's unlocked. If you go to Verizon, you pay full price. Actually, Verizon's not allowed to lock phones, so anything you buy from Verizon is just unlocked automatically. Um, so I buy this phone from T-Mobile, and they tell me I have to use it for three days in order to unlock it permanently. So it has to be on the T-Mobile mobile network for three days. So I'm like, okay, that's weird. It's a little random. All right, fine. So I'm trying to unlock it. I, I didn't use it because I used my iPhone. So I was like, I hadn't used it for a while. So I'm trying to get this unlocked for the past week. I'm talking to support, trying to get this thing unlocked. And they're like, it, it's approved. I don't know what's happening. It keeps failing. 
So yesterday I call in. I'm like, what's going on? I'm trying to unlock this phone. You told me I can unlock it. It's not working. And they're like, well, you've only used it on our network for seven days. I was like, okay, that's more than three. And he's like, and, and it's 40 days. You need to <laughs> use, if, if you buy a phone from T-Mobile, you need to use it with your SIM card in there for 40 days before we can permanently unlock it. That seems Wrong. Isn't that weird? And I said I paid full. I paid full price. Like, there's no agreement between you and I. Just bought a product from yeah. you. That's weird. And that he seems was like, like one of those things they should fix, right? And so he's like, he's putting me on hold, talking to the supervisor and everything. I mean, the guy's super nice. Like, no problem with the guy. But the policy, he's like, the policy is the policy. We can't do anything. And I was like, the guy told me three days. And w- what happened was the three days is if you want to do a temporary unlock. So you're taking a quick vacation to Mexico or something like that. And you want to put a, another SIM card in there? You can do a temporary, like twenty day unlock. Yeah, that's what you need for three days. So it is—it's the official word on their uh, what FAQ page for uh, you unlocking your mobile wireless device. The device must have been active on the T-Mobile network for at least forty days on the requesting line. That's terrible. That's like biblical. Right? Why would you do that? <laughs> I'm paying full price for this device. All you're telling me is I should have gone to some other company to buy this phone instead of buying it from you do, well, as your do, customer. Wait a second. Do we know that Verizon and absolutely. AT&T don't have those same absolutely. policies? I, I absolutely know that because Verizon, due to FCC ruling, getting a bunch of Spectrum a few years ago, they cannot lock their phones. Oh. So you buy a phone from Verizon, it's not locked. If you go to the Apple store, you pay full price as long as you pay full price for the phone. Because I believe what Apple does is all their phones are unlocked until you buy it. And then if you buy it on some sort of plan, that's what triggers it getting locked. So you pay full price, it's not locked. So as a T-Mobile customer, I could have just gone to Verizon and bought this phone and had no problems. Gotcha. Yeah. So fix right. it. My T-Mobile issue, far more petty. <laughs> Let's hear this. Not nearly as meaningful. How to do beach towels? <laughs> the, they came out with the iPhone 7 trade-up program last week. They okay. promised that T-Mobile customers can save $300 on any iPhone 7 or 7 Plus after the trade-in of an iPhone 6, 6 Plus, 6S. That's success, not a bad deal. 6S Plus. I was like, sweet. I've got a 6, 6S Plus. I'm going to trade that thing in. I've been wanting to get an iPhone. I want Actually, not a good deal. iPhone 7. Not a good deal? I understand what you're saying. But what they're saying is they will, they're basically saying we'll buy it from you for $300, but you can get more money for that phone if you sold it on Craigslist. Oh, I or, see what you you're know, saying. Facebook. You trade it in, we're giving you $300. Right. They're saying T-Mobile customers can save right. any, on any iPhone. Right. Basically a credit toward the purchase That's of right. the iPhone That's right. based on the value so they, of the trade So they're in. undervaluing the phone. Interesting. Okay, well. But you didn't realize that. I didn't so realize that. So on. I went in and I was like, okay, so I'm on Jump On Demand. Mm-hmm. So that is basically where I can upgrade to a uh, new phone. Right. At, after a certain time period. And I, actually, I've gotten confused on exactly how jump on demand works. But the idea is it's kind of like insurance where yeah. they allow you to upgrade sort of out of cycle. Annually, right, right. Yeah, at, with, with minimal financial costs. Yes. So I was like, I want to take that mm-hmm. and I want to combine it with this $300 off offer. Right. And so you basically wanted them to pay you to get an iPhone. And seven. you know, I was inspired by you. Andrew, well, who, how do I inspire you? you? When you, I am an inspiring I think guy. you either switched to T-Mobile or you st- or somehow when you when you uh, got your latest T-Mobile plan, yeah, you used all these promotions and you stacked oh, yes. them on top of each yes, other. Yes, I did. And I realized that's more about the monthly bill, not about the hardware cost. So, you know, hardware and software right. here essentially. Uh, so, turns out it does not apply to the hardware. You cannot stack their promotions okay. on top of each other on the hardware side as you can on the billing side. Okay. For did the you storm plan. out of the store? No, they were super nice. <laughs> in fact, in fact uh, the the person who was helping me, the, the T-Mobile employee, was basically she she wrote it all out on a sheet of paper and spent, so she like, was trying she, to make it she happen. Was like she was like, let's say, let's do the math here. If only she had had Excel, it might have oh, been a little faster. Too bad, but and she would have looked sexier too. <laughs> anybody who uses Excel, <laughs> right. by definition, is sexier. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, so uh, if you're just tuning in, that's a reference to something that happened earlier, and it was by no means <laughs> right. a it's sexist a joke. remark. It's a inside joke. A joke from earlier about Don't how much boycott. I love Microsoft Excel. So that's the deal. So just a reminder, search for Geared Up on Apple Podcasts, uh, Google Play, basically wherever you get your podcasts. We are there, SoundCloud, Stitcher. Also, if you want to subscribe to get the live stream, Go to Andrew's YouTube page at youtube.com slash gear live. Yep. 
And you can listen to the show on the radio if you're in the Seattle region at 8 p.m. Saturday nights and 1 p.m. Sundays on Cairo Radio 97.3 FM. All right. Thanks for listening, everybody. Until next time on Geared Up, I'm Todd Bishop. I'm Andrew Edwards. Talk to you next time. Thanks for listening to Geared Up, the weekly tech and gadget podcast. Check out more of Andrew's reviews at youtube.com slash gearlive and follow all of our coverage at geekwire.com.